So we have a working xdebug setup in our Docker file, but it's not very flexible at this point. We have a hard-coded remote host inside of our INI file. Fortunately for us, PHP allows us to use environment variables to configure these dynamically. So let's see how we can do that within the context of Docker. So the first place that we're gonna go is to the Docker Compose file. Inside of our application service, there is a key called env underscore file, and we're gonna make that docker.env. And just like Laravel that ships with a .env example, we're gonna build a .docker.env.example file. So we're gonna call it docker.env.example, and this is what's going to ship with our repository, and then we're going to ignore the docker.env file. So we'll start out in this file. So the first xdebug setting that we're gonna make dynamic is going to be the xdebug remote host setting. So the way that I like to create environment variables that match up with php.ini configuration is this. I use php as the prefix, and then xdebug is the first part of this setting, and instead of a dot, I'll do an underscore remote host. So something like that. And that's what we're gonna add to our .env example file right now. Just to make sure that I have the right IP address, I'm gonna run this command again. In fact, I'm just gonna pb copy. This is available on the Mac. So this is just going to give us a starting point when we're creating a new development environment. And when we copy this file, we can have our own Docker env file for our, our own preferences. So the way that this is formatted in PHP is like this. It's a dollar sign, and then it's the curly brackets, and inside of there is gonna be our environment variable. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to copy this file. So we're gonna do a cp.docker.env.example, docker.env, and you'll want to document this in your setup when you're using this in an application. And then inside of our git ignore, we're gonna add this to the end here. So docker.env. So we've copied our example file. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to restart containers. So we're gonna run docker compose up and d. And inside of our public index file, and we're gonna add php info to the top of this file and exit. And if I hit refresh here, nothing's happening. See, we still have this remote host as dot 13 and we know it was 15. So I brought this up just so I could show you. I wanted to make sure that it was clear that since we changed this dot INI file, we need to rebuild our image. So we need to run docker compose build app again. Okay, so now that our image is done being built, we can run docker compose up again to recreate this container. We go back to Firefox and hit refresh. You'll notice that now we have 192.168.1.15. If we go back to our docker env file and we change this to 16, so notice if we ran docker compose restart, this is gonna restart our containers, but it's not going to refresh the environment variables. So notice it's still .15. In order to do this, we need to shut down the container or recreate it. So we can recreate that with docker compose up. So it's recreating the Laravel www container. I hit refresh, now it's 16. So now you can see that each developer can have his or her own unique setup here, and it's not tied back to building the Docker image. So I, I no longer have to build the Docker image in order to affect the xdebug.ini file. So with that in mind, we're going to add more here. So we can add a PHP xdebug default enable. The other thing that you might want to do in your Docker file is at the top, I like to usually define an env, and then I'm just going to make that zero, for instance. And you can add multiple per line, so we could, so we could just add an empty string for remote host. By default, this isn't going to be set in production. And in the next video, in fact, we're going to walk through how to remove xdebug, so you can run this in production without using xdebug. Okay, so moving on, the next thing that we would probably like to set as a developer is this setting. So I'm just going to copy these remote auto start. We're just going to leave remote connect back to zero and just note here that it's not safe in production and it does not work correctly with the way that Docker runs networking, at least on Docker for Mac. I'm not sure about Linux, but for Windows and Mac, remote connect back isn't going to work. We already have set remote host, so the next thing that we're gonna set is the remote port. So in fact, we can copy this whole prefix here. So we're gonna say port. We're gonna copy this and add it to our example file. And we're gonna make this uh, 9001. And in fact, I'm just showing you this here 
Usually I don't set these in ENV, but you can if you want to provide some defaults. In our case, we're just going to use the .docker ENV file to affect this change. So I'm actually just going to remove this line. I just wanted to demonstrate that you could provide some defaults and we'll probably add some different defaults in the future. For instance, like for path, I like to add vendor bin and then path at the end here. And that way I can just run commands like PHP unit without having to reference the full vendor bin, for instance. Okay, so we also need to add remote auto start to our .env example file. And we're just going to set this as one. Next, we're going to set remote enable. So the default here is going to equal one. And we're going to allow people to set their IDE key. So PHP xdebug IDE key. And since it's all one word, we're just going to leave it like that, even though it might make sense to do IDE key. We're just going to leave it like that. And for profiling, we have profiling turned on by default. And if I go to, because I, I did set it to our storage logs path. If we actually go over here, we can see in storage logs that we do have some cache grind output that we could look at for profiling data. But I usually have this off by default. So that's what we're going to do here. So profiler enable. And by default, we're going to have this set to zero. And then next we're going to have the profiler output dir. We're going to copy this path. Actually, it needs to be profiler output dir. And by default, we're going to set it to our logs folder that has a volume mounted so we can access these locally. And back in here, we need to fix this environment variable so it matches what we have. I like them to match exactly the setting, just so it's easy to understand. I use a prefix to know that this is setting a PHP INI, and then I match xdebug.profileroutputdir, and I just replace the dots with underscores, and I keep the underscores as underscores. And this is just my style. You, you can use whatever style that you want. I find that this is very readable, and I can understand exactly what's being affected here. So let's just make sure we have everything here. So we'll just paste this over and just make sure it matches. So we have our default enable. Looks like we missed that one. We're going to equal one by default. We have our remote auto start. We have remote host. We have remote port. We have remote enable. Looks like we need the IDE key. We're just going to call this Docker xdebug. And we have our two profiler settings. So we'll just copy this over to our Docker ENV file. So we need to rebuild our image again because we have the INI file that has all these environment variables being set. So notice in here that our copy instructions are at the top of the file. So that means that when we change any of these files, this run command has to run. And this is probably the most expensive part and it's installing our extensions and other things. So I like to actually have this kind of stuff to the top of the container. So we're gonna change that now. And in fact, I usually like to set permissions at the end, so I'm going to remove that and have a separate run instruction for that at the end of the file. So the very first run instruction is going to install our PHP extensions via the ext install and peckle commands, and we're going to enable and configure our servers. Then the next thing that's going to change more frequently than these things are the copy instructions. And last, we're going to set up a new run, and we're just going to make sure that the Apache user owns those files. And we need to get rid of this backslash now. So that means when I make these changes, this layer will be cached when I'm building, and it will quickly go over these steps and then the copy instruction obviously is changed. And then that means that this command will need to rerun as well and cannot be cached. Okay, with that in mind, now we can run docker compose build an app. So since we changed this docker file up, it is going to rebuild everything and rerun this instruction here. Okay, so now that our image is done being built, we can run docker compose up. If we head back to Firefox and hit refresh, we should see that our settings haven't changed much here, but we're going to trigger the profiler on just to verify that our changes are actually working. So if we enable the profiler, and we could even just change a couple other settings, just don't have to get too crazy here, but just so you can see that we are in fact using this .env file to affect the INI changes. So Docker Compose 
And if we hit refresh again, now profiler enable is on. We have our dot 16 here, and you can see that we're now using port 9003. The biggest benefit here is notice how I didn't have to do a Docker compose build this time. I just had to change my dot env settings. So a new developer picking up this project can flexibly set his or her own xdebug values here, and they can have a completely customized development environment catered to their specific needs. For instance, if they don't want remote auto start on, or they have a different port, they can have their own settings and it's not going to affect the repository or any of the other developers. The one thing is that if you do work on a team and you add more values to your .env file and you add them to an INI file, make sure that you keep the .env example file up to date so that other developers can pull in your changes. That being said, let's disable the profiler. It is expensive and like I said, I only turn it on when I want to profile something. We're going to set that to zero and we're going to set this back to 15. Now if I run docker compose up again, we'll get our new environment changes. And I should be able to go back to the public folder index.php file and break on this line and it should work now. If I go back to Firefox and hit refresh, we get our incoming connection and now we can step through our code. The last thing I wanna show you before we move on to the next video is in our configuration, we just quickly set up a PHP remote debugger and we did not set up a server or anything like that. But if you wanna filter your connection by IDE key, we can check this box and I can add a new server. So I could call my server Docker, for instance, and I could say that this is on local host. And in our case, we're using port 8080 and we're using the xdebug debugger. And we're gonna check this box, use path mappings, var www.html, and we're gonna hit apply. So this is mapping to the server, just like we did in the last video on the bottom here in the debugger. You can set up this server connection and filter by your IDE key. So in that case, you'll also need to make sure that you're running an extension in your browser. There's one for Firefox and there's one for Chrome, I believe. Those are the two browsers that I tend to use with xdebug. And they allow you to conveniently turn on debugging with this kind of setup. So if I pick Docker as a server and hit apply here and hit OK, Looks like there's still an issue here. And it looks like we forgot to set the IDE key session ID. So back in our Docker environment, I believe it's Docker xdebug. We'll have to verify that. Yeah, so Docker xdebug. Let's just quickly make sure that that's correct. Looks like it's correct. So if I hit okay, we can go hunt down this extension really quickly. So if I search for xdebug, so we have the xdebug helper for Firefox. So actually, if we go back here, we need to stop our debugger. And now we have this little icon in our browser. So if I hit that, I can say debug. And let's manage this extension because I believe we need to configure it. So we're just going to set other and we're going to use Docker xdebug click save. That's our IDE key. This extension just like sets a cookie or something to conveniently enable xdebug with the toggling of that icon. So if I close this and go back to our disable and then I can click debug. So now if I hit refresh, we're getting our connection. So this is how you make your Docker images very flexible. The really neat thing is that PHP INI files allow you to use environment. When you're using PHP FPM like we will be later, there is a caveat. You need to make sure that it's not clearing environment. Fortunately, the official PHP image ships with that setting so that clear ENV is off, which means that all of our environment that we set in the container is going to be available inside of our INI config. We're also going to use this later to configure the opcache extension, which is really convenient for triggering a few settings between development and production and how opcache is used. And it makes these images super flexible. And indeed we can extract this and make it a base image and use it on all of our Laravel projects. So the last thing that we're going to do is commit our changes throughout the last two videos. We've made changes to xdebug and our Docker image to support that. So the first thing that we're gonna do is see what kind of changes we have. So first we'll look at the diff in our files. We are ignoring the Docker env file because that's going to be the file that each developer configures individually. We've added the env underscore file key to our docker compose file for the app service and that allows us to set env from a file. 
And then we've moved our instructions around a little bit so that we can have these more expensive instructions running at the top of the image and they'll be cached for the most part as they don't change as often as copying some of these files and other run instructions that we're gonna add in the future. And finally, we have a couple files here. So we're just gonna add those now. We're gonna add this one and git add docker config. In fact, we're just gonna use the git add everything. So real quickly, just git status. So now that we have a very flexible Xdebug setup, in the next video, we're gonna take that further and allow our image to be so flexible that we can remove Xdebug altogether when we run our container in production. So in the next video, we'll be customizing the way that our containers start and starting to look into other ways we can make our containers more flexible.